Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray.
when we sing it.
Do you believe it? Why don't we give God a great ovation this morning? Be grateful, grateful for what He's done in our lives. Amen. Amen. Okay, this felt like colour, Ben. That just felt like colour around the world last year. You know why? Because we sang that song every night at Colour around the world. And I was like, break every chains, when do I get up? Break every chains, when do I get up? And every time we sing that song, Cass Langton looks at me and I look at her and I'm like, is it my chance to get up? Amen. Finding that segue in worship. Put your hand on your chest, on your heart. Let's pray this morning, amen. <laughs> it's like we're pleasing allegiance, but you know, our hearts are just going heavenward. Father God, we thank You for this beautiful morning. We thank You, Lord Jesus, that we get to be in Your house and we are under the sound of worship and praise and honour and Your glory, Father God. And our hearts are open to You for You to have Your divine way, not only in our lives, in this service, in this location, but all across the nation. So Father, we give You all the praise and all the glory. And everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. It's not a true Amen unless you say it three times. Amen. Okay, where are the men? Where are the men who were here Friday night? How good was men's event? You guys need to give us three hearty amens. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Amen. Stay on your feet. Brian is on the screens. He's in the city this morning. He's on the screens, wants to say hi to you. So stay on your feet. Across our entire church, everywhere we're gathered this morning, we're going to come, we're going to believe God for people who have put in prayer requests in faith. These prayer requests are every area of life you can imagine. And we are a faith-filled church, believing in Jesus, believe in the power of God to bring transformation, to bring change. And so wherever you are, as they hold up those prayer requests, come on, everyone here, raise your hand towards them and let's in faith believe God for answered prayer. Father, I thank You in Jesus' Name that You are a God who answers prayer. We thank You for Your miracle working power. We thank You we can look to You with faith in our hearts, not because of who we are, but because of who You are and what You've already accomplished. And Lord, right now we speak it into sicknesses and diseases and into every other need that people may face today, whether they're financial, whether they're spiritual, whether they're material, Father, whether it's to do with salvation or bondage or any other thing, we know that Jesus is the answer. And we give You all the praise. We give You all the glory. In Jesus' Name. In Jesus' Name. In Jesus' Name. Amen. Wow. How good that we as a church can gather together. You've got to love that. It's always a great chance of having Pastor Charles Neiman, at least at the Hills campus today, is incredible. We're going to have a great day right across the church. And I'm excited tonight because we've got part two. We've got Ben and Carolee Fielding, who are going to interview Bobby and I about some of the big, gnarly questions, social issues and life in general and all of the things that connect and relate to our lives. So we're looking forward to that. It's a great day to be alive, great day to be in church. And everybody said, Amen. So will you guys be blessed? Have a fantastic service. Amen. All the big gnarly questions, I'm so terrified. <laughs> okay, you know what? We're a friendly church. And if you're here this morning, you've new to the place, you've never been to Hillsong Church, never been inside this room, or maybe you haven't been for a while, we're, we love that you're here. So a huge welcome. And because we're church, we're gonna turn around and like shake the hand and welcome at least three people, and then you can be seated, amen. <laughs>
fantastic. As you take your seats this morning and we looked at the screens for all the various ways that we can honour the Lord with our giving. Pastor Donna Crouch is gonna come up and encourage us. So why don't we put our hands together for her. Come on, Don. Thanks, Bobby. Good morning, church. I'd love to encourage you this morning as you take this moment to get your giving ready this morning out of Psalm 116 and a few verses. To lift your perspective and my perspective, it says this, I love the Lord because He hears my voice and my prayer for mercy, because He bends down to listen. I will pray as long as I have breath how kind the Lord is and how good He is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I love these verses because it helps us zoom out a little bit from the speed bumps of life that you and I might be going through right now. Um, About a month or so ago, I smashed the side mirrors, the side mirror on my car, which was a real pain and a really expensive pain. So I found myself having to gaff tape every time I drove my car and went over 60 k's, the um, side mirror would go like that. (laughs) And um, what it meant was I lost perspective driving. I could only see here and forward. And I came to appreciate the side mirrors on my car and, and even though it was expensive, when they put them back in, it was really good because I could see, I could look and I could have a glance at where I'd been. I could see where I was right now and where I was going. And I love that this moment in our giving and the Word of God does exactly that. Rather than just get focused on the crisis and problems and things that we all face, problems that we all face in life and just zoom in on that. The Bible says that God our Father bends down and listens to us like a father does a child. And can I encourage you this morning to not just get focused on the speed bumps of life, but understand that the character of our Heavenly Father is so good and to not lose the side mirror that gives us perspective, which is God's Word and God's promise, amen? And let's remember that He's good and He will have the final say on everything. So thank you again for your generosity and faithfulness. Let's pray over our giving, whether it's online or in this service. Father, thank You this morning for Your continued faithfulness. You cannot help but be a Father to us. And so Lord, as we just honour You this morning with what we have in our best, Lord, we ask that first of all, that You would bless it and take it to reach people that You just love. And Lord, as we do this, Lord, we just know that Your blessing will continue to be on all that we have, Lord, and all that we um, hold in our hearts as our, our, our dreams, Father. And we just know that we can be secure under Your goodness. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Church. As a host service, can you check out the screens for everything that's coming up November, December? Very exciting time in church. Thank you. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Saviour's birth. Long lay the world in sin and never pining till he appeared and the soul.
that awesome cool time of the year and uh, we're excited about that. So obviously the last thing on the screen was uh, Tuesday night. So do we have any women in the room? Girls, quickly stand to your feet. If you're a female, stand to your feet. Amen. If you're not sure, it's okay. (laughs) I'll take you, okay? (laughs) All right, ladies, this is our night. This is our night. Say, it's my night. It's my night. It is our night. And I just want to encourage every single one of you to be in the room on Tuesday night. We've got this room. It's open. It's like, it's a big room to fill girls. So, you know, come and can you know what? Put your hand up if you think you could bring someone. Here we go. Here's the challenge now. Put your hand up and think, okay, just put it up in faith and say, I'm going to believe that between now and Tuesday night, I can bring somebody. Yeah? I had someone on my Instagram say, Pastor Bobby, I'm inviting two of my neighbours and I'm so nervous. And I said, don't be nervous. We will love them. I will be awesome. I will look after them. I won't scare them away. I promise. It's an incredible night. You can be seated, girls. Anyway, I just wanted to do that because honestly, it's our night. It's not just a Sisterhood Thursday thing. It's our night. The women of Hillsong Church gathering and not only here, but now in... 28 nations and 30, no, 30 nations and 80 locations. I'm losing count. So that's kind of exciting, right? Everyone say Christmas. Okay, on your seats, why don't you lean down and grab this. We've produced this beautiful, beautiful mechanism for you to know exactly what is happening and for you to know um, what you can also bring people to. And so it's fantastic. And it's called this year, it's called the Thrill of Hope. The Thrill of, yeah, the Thrill of Hope. And uh, so many beautiful layers to it. Christmas Spectaculars, which you have seen on the screen and you know that they are amazing. How many of us get there and go, oh my goodness, I so should have extended this to someone in my life. So get on the front foot of that because our team will never disappoint us. They will always bring something that you can be proud of. And then of course, our um, kilo of Christmas is here, the red bags, you know how that works. Or you can go online or you can do both. There's something kind of nice about going online, get it out of the way. But there's also something lovely about taking one of these red bags and hanging it over the shopping trolley and walking around the supermarket and feeling like you're making a difference in the world, amen? Amen. And of course, Brian talked about tonight and it will be special. It's an opportunity for us to um, just be in a relaxed environment amongst friends and family and, um, you know, have some questions posed. And last week was ridiculous. It's hilarious. Amen. Praise the Lord. Netflix and children. Did you remember that bit? I'm like, no, darling, he was asking if, if it's... All that's in front of us is Netflix and chill. But Brian heard children and then he said, I think we're too old for children. And I agreed. But Serge, you're not. (laughs) Amen. It's lovely to have Bali and Karingai with us at this part of the service. All right, we love Pastor Charles Neiman, correct? We love Pastor Charles. Come and take this joy, joy. Joy to the world. It's so heavy. (laughs) And... um, Charles is a dear friend. He's um, like, he and Brian, they're like old mates. There's a a kind of a pack of them. They're the old mates on the earth. And this week, actually, Charles, tongue in cheek here. This week, he has turned 70. So Charles has been spending his 70th birthday week with us and he's been working hard. So I want us to stand to our feet, church, and welcome Pastor Charles Neiman from El Paso, Texas, to bring the Word of God this morning. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Wow, thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. And, uh, you know, I love, I love, I'm going to get all sentimental. Guys from Texas aren't supposed to be that way. <laughs> but uh, I love your pastors. I love what they stand for. I love what they're doing with their lives. I love their family. Uh, every time the kingdom calls upon them, their family stands up and answers. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Amen. 
All right, you, you can be seated. I, I, need to, I need to move along, or I'm gonna stand up here and get all blubbery and... Uh, I don't know why I'm that way, but I am. Amen. So anyway, you guys doing okay? Yeah. Hey, uh, I, uh, if, if, if you were at the men's event on Friday night, I, uh, a part of what I, I taught on was a, a belief in me, and, and I'm going to be sharing along some of those same lines a different side of that this morning, um, about, and about not giving up, not throwing in the towel, not surrendering to circumstances and situations and things that have happened in your life. And, and it, it comes out of Luke 18.1 where Jesus said, I will that men ought always, and he gives two things. Number one, to pray. So I need to build into my life a lifestyle of prayer, right? A lifestyle of prayer ought always to pray. A lifestyle of prayer. And then the second word he said was, and faint not. And so pray, lifestyle of prayer, and don't build into your culture, into your heart, a, a lifestyle of surrender. And, and the, the term faint not, if you can read it in the original language that Jesus said, it carries with it the idea of don't wave the white flag the white flag of surrender. Don't wave the white flag. In fact, burn the white flag. And so that has always been very strong in my heart and I'm gonna be sharing some things with you today, but over my life, I've always kind of had, had that and believed in that and refused to give up. So a couple of years ago, I did a teaching called Burn the White Flag and then I turned it into a book. And uh, it's kind of the story of my life and uh, things that I've been through and and uh, you know, stuff that Satan has tried to get me to, to quit, to walk away, to walk away from my marriage, walk away from my calling, walk away from God's purpose, walk away from my church, just walk away and uh, surrender, throw in the towel, quit. And uh, you know what, maybe this will help you today if you're thinking about quitting. And here was a thought that came to me years ago. And that thought was, so if I quit today, is my life suddenly going to get better? No, no, the devil's not going to call the dogs off. He's just going to keep them on you. So you might as well get up and fight. Amen. And, and if, you, if you surrender. So anyway, uh, maybe this book will help you. I hope it does. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very excited about it and getting a lot of good reports back on it. Maybe, maybe it'll be a blessing in your life. It's somewhere here on the property. All right. You guys ready to rock and roll? Amen. I want to talk to you today about an incredible promise that has changed my life. And, and I want to share it with you today because my, my prayer is, is that it'll change your life and it'll pick you up and take you forward in life and cause your life to flow like a river, which is God's definition of the word blessed. And it'll be a part of that. So we're going to begin in Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 17 in the message Bible. I love the way this is. I found this several years ago. I'll tell you a little bit of the story in just a moment, but I want to start here. So look at it here. It says, if death got the upper hand through one man's wrongdoing, that one man would be Adam, right? Through one man's wrongdoing, death got the upper hand. Can you imagine? Will you stop right there? Will you just open up over the next few moments and just imagine what he wants to have happen happening to you? And you're gonna, a couple of you are going to have to use your imagination because it's so astounding what he wants to do in your life. Can you imagine the breathtaking recovery life makes? Stop for a second. Imagine you experiencing recovery life. Recovery life. Recovery life. Hmm? Can you imagine? Is it possible that you could get your life back? Hmm? Can you imagine the breathtaking recovery life makes sovereign life in those who grasp with both hands this wildly extravagant life gift? Look, look at those words, wildly extravagant life gift. Look at this, this grand, I'm sorry, guys in the control room, I'm jumping around, I apologize. This grand setting, everything right that the one man Jesus Christ provides 
only God can talk this way. Right? Only God can look at me and look at you and see the destruction that may have gone through our lives and say, hey, imagine recovery life for you. And not just okay recovery life, wildly extravagant, breathtaking. Imagine recovery coming to your life to such an extent that it takes your breath away. Hmm? And not just mediocre recovery life, wildly extravagant recovery life. Let me drop a thought on you. Nowhere in the scripture, nowhere in the gospels is there one man, one woman, one child came to Jesus and their life got worse. Not one. Every one of them, their life got better. And not kind of better, wildly extravagant better breathtaking better, right? We read the gospels and we go, oh my God, look at that. There was a guy born blind, now he sees. Mm, there's a guy at the beautiful gate, can't walk, now he runs. Huh? There's a mother bearing her son, she gets her son back. Huh? There's a guy with leprosy, he's cleansed. <gasps> well, pastor, that could never happen. No, just imagine you having that kind of experience. A breathtaking, wildly extravagant recovery life. Huh? I'm gonna show you how to get there. You ready? So it's incredible. Is it possible? Yes, it is that you can get your life back. It is. It is possible for you to recover, for you to have recovery, for you to recover, to have things set right and not just kinda, I'm going to say it again, but wildly extravagant recovery life through Jesus and his life gift. The dictionary defines recovery as the regaining of something lost or taken away. Restoration or return to health or normal condition. Maybe that's your recovery today. Maybe today we plant the seed in you and health starts coming back. You start getting normal thoughts, normal sleep, normal relationships, normal outlook, right? He continues, or the dictionary continues. It means to obtain what one has lost possession of. I love this, the possession, the process of regaining possession of your life. To get your life back to get it out from the control of whatever and you get it back and you get it recovery life. Wow. So how does this happen? What does it mean? And why, why is this such a big deal to me? Well, several years ago, several years ago, we just finished our 40, we're finishing this year, our 42nd year as a church. So I started when I was 10 in case you know, Bobby already told you how old I was, so I can't even pass that one off on you. Amen. So anyway, uh, we just finished our 10th year as a church. And so this was quite a while ago, but I'll share with you real quick what happened to us. All right. We just finished our 10th year and our first 10 years as a church, we never had less than 25% growth. Some years we had a hundred percent, but never had less than 25%. We finished the 10th year. There was no reason to think it would change. We had this incredible, we were on this incredible roll and didn't think anything would change. Well, in January, for the first time in 10 years, we didn't meet budget. We finished in the red. I didn't think anything about it. I ignored it. Don't make my mistake. I ignored it. Didn't pay attention to it. I thought it was an anomaly. February came. I didn't think anything about it. Well, at the same time, March came. Same thing. We're in the red. At the same time, two really well-known televangelists in America back-to-back were caught in immorality. I didn't think it would affect us. This was the time in America where the local church was not what it is today. The local church had not surged like it has now. So the televangelists were really leading the body of Christ in America at that time. They were way more well-known than local pastors were. All right? And uh, so we had not kind of stepped into the age we're in now. Thank God. Okay. And uh, so, you know, we, we were in that. And so these guys, well, I never thought that their failure would affect us. 
right? They were a part of the denomination we weren't a part of. Our church is non-denominational and we weren't a part of it. Neither one of them had ever been to my town. Neither one of them had ever spoken to my church. One of their television ministries, one of them, they weren't even on in my city. And to be honest with you, I didn't really like either one of them, right? So, I mean, <laughs> big deal. I didn't like them. I'm sure they don't like me and that's cool. And, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. And so, you know, uh, I didn't think it would affect us, but boy, did it affect us. Little did I know that this would continue for three years. At the end of three years, our church attendance had gone from 1,900 on Sunday morning to 900, right? Uh, we went months, months without being paid. I don't know how we kept our house. I, I have no idea. Uh, we tried to figure it out later. I, I guess we would just somehow get a few do enough dollars together during the month we could make our house payment. I don't know how we did it. Uh, I began having chest pains. I began having pains down the left side of my arm. Began losing my hair. My first wife, Rochelle, is now in heaven. We began to rub up against each other, not in a good way, you know, and... Uh, Did I just say that? I think I did. <laughs> Thought I was back in Texas there for a second. So, um, was not good. And uh, I, I finally reached a point where I thought we were gonna have to file bankruptcy, ministry bankruptcy, close the church, personal bankruptcy. And one morning I was driving to work, God had outspoken to me in years, I felt like, and, and I was driving and I was crying out to God and, and out of nowhere, he spoke to me and said, you know what to do, do it. And I knew exactly what he was talking about. So I went to my office that morning, put off my appointments, got out some scripture cards that I had. And I began, maybe this will help you. I began, and it's based out of 1 John 5, 4. This is the victory. This is the victory. This is, this is, this is, this is. Not that, not that, not that, not that, this. This is, this is, crying is not, weeping is not, sympathy is not. This is the victory. This is, the, this is the, this is, this, this is the victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. And 2 Corinthians 4.13 says that faith is made up of two components, believing and speaking. What is faith? Believing and speaking. What is faith? Believing and speaking. Yeah. So I began to purposely, on purpose, speak God's word, believing it and speaking it. And slowly, the rock began to turn the other direction. I had no idea. Well, the long and the short of it is, is that it took us three more years to get back to where we had been. Wow. So for the longest time, for years after that, I would tell people, that I lost six years of my life. And it tainted every victory, it tainted every great moment in our lives, so much it tainted it. Even when we built our new sanctuary, it's like this one, same size, and we built it, and so many people by then wanted to come to the dedication. We had to have two dedication services, right? And I was walked into the first one and the building was completely packed. We were turning people away by literally by the thousands and they, they had to try to come back to the second one. I walked in, a pastor friend of mine was there, put his arm on my shoulder and he said, wow, Charles, how do you feel? And I said, wow, this is great. I said, but I should have been here six years ago. So even in that great moment of victory, it was tainted. Does that make sense to you? Because of this sense of loss that I had been stolen from six years of my life had been taken from me, right? Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. And it just kind of carried on with me. Well, a couple of years later, I was at Casey Treats Church, right? I know you've heard of him, okay? And I was at Casey Treats Church and I was speaking to a pastor's conference and Casey had heard me tell this story and he said, hey, come in and tell the pastors your story about the six years and what you did. So I did and I told them just like I did and I finished that night and I said, I live with an anger in me, right? That I used to motivate me that I've been, had six years of my life stolen. Now, it was a good motivator, but it also tainted. It robbed me of joy, it robbed me of victory, robbed me of a lot of good things in my life. Am I, am I making sense to you today? So I'm riding back to the hotel. I promise you there's an end to the story. I'm riding back to the hotel. <laughs> and in the middle of the car, the Lord speaks to me. And I get to, the, I get to the room and I wrote it down. And I'll read to you exactly what he said to me. He said, why have you accepted this? 
question mark, exclamation point. Why are you thinking, believing, and speaking this way? If you believe me, I will restore and cause you to recover those years and the fruit that was eaten away and you shall be satisfied. Right? Now, beautiful promise. Great thing to hear in your heart, but you got to back it up with scripture. Let me say that again. You know, people hear things all the time, but if it doesn't line up with the word, then it wasn't the Lord. It was pizza you ate at midnight. It wasn't <laughs> the Lord. Okay. Yeah. Amen. All right. So I got to the room that night and I began to look and I began to look up recovery. I began to look up restoration and I discovered, I'm, I'm not going to take you there. I'm, I discovered in on the day of Pentecost, when Peter was preaching, he makes all of these amazing statements. We're going to look at some of them in a minute. But one of the things that he blots, that, that he says, well, you can look at it there. It says, to repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, next verse, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, next, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, it should say restoration or recovery. So what if you study that, what you discover is, get ready, is that in between the first coming of Jesus and the second coming, which is when we're living, he says everything, the literal Greek text says, everything that can be restored shall be, and then Jesus shall come back. So we are living in a time where God wants to bring restoration, recovery to your life and my life. I'm going to say it to you again. You are living in that time, a time of restoration where this is one of the promises that God wants to bring about in your life and my life. He wants to bring recovery life to you and me. He wants to bring it to you. And it's a great promise because, you know, sometimes in life, really crummy things happen to really good people. You can say amen to that. It's true. But somehow, though, we learn to live with it, and we think we're just supposed to live with it, and that's what I was doing. And then I began to look at this. Well, I'm going to very quickly walk you through. So I ended up at the beginning of all this, right, when he first began to speak, right, on the day of Pentecost. And I backed up all the way to the beginning, all right? And, and then you start here in Acts chapter 2, verse 16. Peter says, and this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. That's why I only talk about having visions. Because <laughs> I'm a young man. My pastor, Tommy Barnett, has the dream center just because he's an old man. <laughs> Amen. Don't tell him I said that because he will hurt me. All right? So, you know this verse, right? I said, you know this verse, right? Yeah. Sure you do. You come to church here, you know this verse. This is a New Testament verse. Okay? It belongs to us. So what you discover in this is that Peter said that what Joel had prophesied is no longer a prophecy. It is now a reality. It has gone from will happen to is here. This is that, okay? So this is that, and this has come to pass. So this prophecy in Joel is now in effect. So I thought, I'd never, I'd never thought about it. So I said, hey, let's go back and look at that. So I went back to the book of Joel. You with me so far? All right, now let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at Joel chapter two, verse 28. See if you've heard this, and it shall come to pass. Afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. So we just read it, right? So then the question came to me, what did he say before this? This was the end of the prophecy. So what else is included? You with me so far, right? So what else is included? There's more, I hope, I think, maybe. So I went back. So let's look at it. Let's go all the way back up to verse 23. You still with me? So he's saying now, he said, be glad then, 
ye children of Zion. Stop with me. Whenever you read the scripture and you see the children of Zion, you've got to ask yourself, you've got to read it in context. And the context is, is it literal? Because if it's a literal statement, he's talking to the nation of Israel. But if it's a figurative statement, as in a prophecy, then he's talking to the church. Now we know that this prophecy is written to the church because we just read the end of the prophecy. And Peter brought it into the New Testament. Am I getting too geeky for you? Right? This, uh, this, uh, I love this kind of stuff. My brain just goes, yes, 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 right? So I love connecting dots. So then we know now that he's talking to us, right? He's talking to all of us in this room today. All of us watching on the links. He's talking to us, the children of Zion, the children of the church. And he says, in re- how else do I know this? He said, because then rejoice in the Lord, your God. The word Lord there in the Hebrew is the Hebrew word Yahweh. Yahweh is the Old Testament word that means redeemer, deliverer, savior. So it's none other than Jesus speaking to us out of God. The word God there is the word Elohim, which means God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's the plural term for God. So it is, I'm really getting geeky now, aren't I? I'm sorry. This is a teacher. This is what we do, right? And he says, so it's Jesus talking to us out of the Godhead, speaking to his children. Woo, love it. For he had given you the former rain moderate, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain, the first month. So when the Bible talks about rain, you got to ask yourself, is he talking literal rain or figurative rain? Well, we know he's talking figurative rain here because this is a prophecy that has not yet come to pass. But it has come to pass now. So when it's figurative rain, you can write it down. The term rain there means times of blessings, plural, blessings, and joy. Times, plural, times. In other words, you're not going to live a life in the New Testament. Oh, remember when God blessed us 44 years ago? No, God's still blessing now. He still wants to bless your life now. There's times. It's not a one shot. You don't get to like spin the wheel. Oh, there's one blessing out there with your name on it. When are you going to take it? Early in life, middle life, late life. When are you going to take it? No, there's times of blessings. Times of joy that God's going to pour out on you, right? And the floor should be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. I'll explain all this to you in a minute. And my great army, which I sent among you, I wish they translated it correctly. It should say, and the great army that came against you. And you, children of Zion, children sitting in the service right now, watching on the link, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Remember, that's what the Lord said to me in the car. And I was like, wow, look at that. God quoted to me his own word and shall be satisfied and praise the name of the Yahweh who's speaking to you out of Elohim who had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Let me give you, I'm gonna jump way ahead to that word ashamed. What it means is you'll look backward and you'll look forward and you'll not be disgraced. Talk about restoration. Huh? Huh? You'll look backward and you'll look forward and you'll not be disgraced. All right, let's break it down, right? He said, and he and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. Again, when you see the word locust, you got to read it. Is it literal locust like in Egypt with Moses or is it figurative? Well, we know it's figurative, right? Because it's a prophecy. So when it's figurative, the Bible dictionary says locust in the Bible represents a day, a time, or a season of destruction. A day, a day, a time, that's multiple days, or a season, which is what we went through, three years. Right? A day, a time, or a season. So God says, even if your destruction was short, right? You wake up in the morning, Your life looks good. You come home that night. You're like, oh my God, what just happened? Some of you know what I'm talking about. Hmm? Or a time 
right? Several days, few months, like chaos in your world, or a season, a whole childhood, a whole marriage, a whole career, right? Bang, 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 bang. That's what we went through. It's just like it wouldn't stop. It just kept piling on, piling on, piling on. Am I making sense to you? God says, God says, doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me. Which one happened to you? A day, a time, or even a season. Don't believe that this lasted so long and was so bad. You got to learn to live with it. I can still bring restoration to your life. I can still bring restoration. I can still bring recovery life to you. Imagine your life experiencing breathtaking recovery. Hmm? Again, only God can talk this way. So what does he mean? Are you with me still? What does he mean by canker worm, caterpillar, palmer worm? What? You know? So instead of just blowing it off, I said, hey, Charles, look it up, study, find out. What's he talking about? What I discovered is those two, three words are words that were used to describe the different levels of locus development. All right? And what God is talking to is what I wish I had seen, but I'm so glad I can share with you now. So let's look at it, right? Canker worm. That's the creeping stage of the caterpillar, of, of the locust, excuse me. That's when it doesn't have its wings yet. That is the beginning of destruction. Don't make the mistake I made. If you don't get anything out of what I tell you today, please get this. Don't ignore destruction going on in your life, no matter how minor it is, no matter how insignificant you think it is. Don't ignore it. I did. I thought it would go away. I'm a nice guy. I'm a sweet pastor. You should have said amen to that. <laughs> amen. All right. I'm a nice guy. I'm a good husband. I'm a good father. I'm a good friend. I'm a good citizen. It'll get better. Right? Not going to get better because you're nice. It's going to get better because you attack it. Because you do what I'm going to share with you in about two or three minutes, right? You're going to do what God tells you to do and you're going to attack it no matter what stage it is. No, the beginning of this. Then there's the caterpillar. That's the next stage of locust development. This is where the destruction increases. Okay? We lost people's helping us. Then attendance began to drift. Then we began to have things. Then I began to have health, issue, health issues. Then we couldn't make our payments. Then we couldn't do this and we couldn't do that. We had to lay people off. There's still people in El Paso will not speak to me because I had to lay them off because I couldn't afford to pay them. Hmm? So the destruction continued. Don't do what I did. Don't ignore it. If you're in that stage right now, no matter where you are, wherever you listen to my voice, don't ignore the destruction that's going on in your life right now. Face it and go at it. Don't ignore it. No matter how, don't, don't, okay? Because if you don't, it's going to keep going. Then there's the palmer worm. Palmer worm literally means gnawing beast. In the Hebrew text, it means it, it's that which usually doesn't devour the crop. It simply affects the crop. You see a lot of this in people's lives, right? You're not ready to get a divorce, but your marriage isn't what it used to be. Right? Not ready to get a divorce, but it's not what it was a year ago, five years ago. What have you got? You got a gnawing beast. Crunch. Crunch. Huh? My business is okay. We're not close to bankruptcy. It's not, was, not what it was. Crunch. Crunch. Am I... Am I yeah. getting through to you? Yeah. Hmm? Right, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I don't have the, I, I'm not completely without peace, but I don't have as much peace as I used to. Crunch, crunch. Don't make the mistake I made. Don't ignore it. Huh? These words are in the Bible to help you so you're aware, so you know. And God is saying, no matter what stage you may be in, pastor, I've waited too long. No, you didn't wait too long. There's still recovery for you. There's still restoration for you. Whether your destruction has just begun or it's been going on for years, there's still recovery for you. There's still restoration for you. God is saying no matter where you are, 
I'll bring it into your life, right? Isn't this good? Then he warns us about another thing, right? He says the great army that comes against you. That term army there means those strong for war. God recognizes and knows that there are people in the earth that their personality is such that they love war. They love to fight. They love, they love it. And if you've had the misfortune of being encountered them, they will go through your life and they will destroy you. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you were raised by a parent that was strong for war. Some of you were married to somebody that was strong for war. Some of you worked for someone, right? And they look at you as simply something for them to use. They have no care. And a lot of you have been hurt by them. They've been through your life. They brought devastation to you. And some of you are waiting for them to come back and apologize. Let me help you this morning. They're not going to apologize. They're not wired to apologize. That's not the way they are. They don't care what happened to you. So quit looking to them and look to him and I believe for God. God said, I don't care what they did to you. I will bring restoration, but here you go. So how do you respond to this? He's going to tell you in verse 26. Are you ready? He says, and you shall eat in plenty. That word eat in plenty, eat in plenty means you will lay claim to the space you lost. You will lay claim to the space you lost. You will lay claim to the space you lost. So you know what I did? I started, and I realized now what I had to do. So that night in my hotel room in Seattle, Washington, I stood up in my room and I said, I claim back those six years. I'm not going to live the rest of my life telling myself I lost that. God's going to give me the fruit. God's going to give it back to me. God's going to restore. I don't know how. I don't know how he's going to do it. And I'm so glad to tell you today that everything we lost has been restored. Everything has come back. I don't live with that sense of loss anymore. So I changed my focus. Am I helping you to doubt? Now watch this. You're going to love this, right? You're going to love this. Are you ready? He said, you shall be satisfied. You shall be satisfied. The word satisfies means you shall be filled. You will enjoy his presence. Are you ready? I'm saving the last, the best one for last. And you shall have too much. Huh? And you shall have too much. So you go from devastation to too much. Don't, God wants you to experience. That is breathtaking recovery in your life. That is wildly extravagant recovery life, right? That you go from, wow, look at me. I've been destroyed. I've been hurt. I've been damaged. I've been stolen from. I had my innocence taken from me. I had this, this, and God says, I understand all that. Pastor, I made huge mistakes. I'm so ashamed. God said, no big deal. You're going to look back and you won't even be ashamed anymore. Mm-hmm. And you'll have too much. Yeah. A few months ago, I was at a coffee shop and I placed my order. I was on my work at church, on my way to church in the morning, and I was standing there. There's some guys in there from the church. I said hi to them. They were doing something. And I'm just standing there waiting for my latte. And I look up, and there's a guy coming at me who doesn't have the same happy face <laughs> that these guys from the church do, right? And I'm like, oh, come on, man, leave me alone, right? I'm just here. I'm just here. I'm just getting a latte. I'm going to be out of here in a moment. You won't even have to see me anymore. Just leave me alone. <laughs> I didn't say any of that. I'm just looking at him and here he comes and he comes walking and he goes, gets about as close to me as the front row and he stops and he goes, are you that Charles Neiman guy? Right? And out of the corner of my eye, I see the guys from the church and they're going like, <laughs> right? And I'm thinking, be nice because they're not as saved as I am. I said, yeah, I'm that Charles Neiman guy. And he got, takes a step closer and he goes, you got that big mega church, that abundant living thing, right? And I said, yeah, I've got that. And he goes, you have too much. And I just grabbed my latte and walked out. I got in my car and put my drink down. I'm telling you, lifted my hands. And I said, God, look at you. 
years ago, I was going to have to, I was on the verge of losing everything. And now even my enemies have to admit that you have brought recovery life to me. Even my enemies have to admit. And if God did it for me, he can do it for you. Stand to your feet with me, please. Can I pray for you? Would you lift your hands towards heaven? Father, in the name of Jesus, Redeemer, Deliverer, Savior, I thank you today. And I know that all across this room and across the campuses and the links that there are men and women that have had destruction go through their life. Emotional, friends, family, health, finances, things I can't even imagine. Man's inhumanity to man is staggering. They've had the great army go through their life. And as they look, there's destruction, lack, hurt, pain. But today, today, you have brought them the word and the promise of recovery life, breath taking recovery life. So right now, Lord, I pray that in their heart, they'll look at their life and go, no more. I claim that back. I take that back. I take that, I take my joy back. I take my help back. I take my strength back. I take it back. I take it back. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be restored. You're going to give me too much. Too much. In Jesus name and everyone that agreed shouted amen. amen. Thank you all. Love you. God bless. Come on, everyone, everyone, we can do better than that. Let's really put our hands together. Please stop still, stop still. We've still got plenty of time. Look, Charles may have finished, but I don't believe that the Holy Spirit has finished with that message just yet. That message impacts all of us. And I believe it's the will of God for that message, not just to impact us, but to get in us and to bring about what that message promises, amen? And we're gonna create a moment for the Holy Spirit, everyone everywhere. The team are gonna lead us, but we're gonna worship Jesus, that breathtaking, extravagant, wildly recovery life giver, And we're gonna believe the Holy Spirit's gonna seal something powerful in every single one of us, amen? So come on, why don't we do that?
This is our prayer this morning. Beautiful. I want to take a moment. There's a few things we still want to do, but in this moment, I want to talk about Jesus. There are people here and those that are linked and maybe through church online, or you could even be watching on YouTube right now. And you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. And the fact that you're here or maybe you're watching tells me that there's something happening on the inside. And you know about Him, but He's up there somewhere and you don't quite know how it all works, but you know there's something that's missing. You know, I can relate to that message about the abundant, <laughs> extravagant life because in 1991 at 22, I was broken. My life was so dark on the inside. I mean, on the outside, it all looked fantastic, but on the inside, it was a different story. And, and I finally got to that point where Jesus wasn't even on the bottom of the list. I had to put Him there. I'll never forget when I surrendered my life to Jesus, something so powerful happened. I was expecting some rules to follow, but instead I met Him. I met Him, He changed my life. I was dead and now I was alive. I was blind and now I could see. I had that life that Charles was talking about and it came from Jesus. And I'm gonna ask people everywhere, accept Him, say yes to Him. He's the only one that can to give the sort of life that Charles has been talking about. So I'm gonna ask everyone everywhere, close your eyes for a moment. And there are people also here that you know that life because you once walked in it, but you've made decisions that have dislocated you from that life. You know, the great news is that today it can all change. It can change in an instant, it can change in a moment if you simply just say yes and come back to Him. 
So everyone everywhere, if you want to give your life to Jesus, if you're saying, yes, Sam, that's me. I know that's why I'm here. I don't understand it all, but I know it's a decision I need to make. I'm going to ask you, why don't you raise your hand and say, Sam, that's me. I know I need to give my life to Jesus. Fantastic. People raising their hands. I'm believing everywhere we're linked. People raising their hands. Say, yes, Sam, that's me. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Fantastic. So come on, why don't we all pray this prayer together? It's a prayer that says yes to Jesus. Come on, out loud, one big family in every location. Why don't we pray? Dear Jesus, I thank You that You died on the cross for my sin and that You rose again. I ask that You'll forgive me and that You'll come into my life and that You'll be my Lord and Saviour. Thank You. I'm now forgiven. My life is now new. In Jesus' Name. Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, everyone everywhere. Let's really put our hands together and celebrate. So good, so good. This is what we want to do. When, once the service finishes, and we'll let you know when that is, we're going to give you a Bible at all our exits, every location. Now, even on the screen, there's going to come up an option for those of you that are watching on. And we want to give you this Bible as a free gift. So please, please go to them. Say, hey, I prayed that prayer and we'll give this to you. Hey, if you know you should have and you did, I just want to tell you, you haven't missed out. Also, you go and say, you know what? I really need to pray that prayer. And we'd love to give you this Bible as a gift. Is that cool? Fantastic. Hey, why don't we take a seat? Who's glad they came to church this morning? What a fantastic, Charles, again, thank you so much for an amazing, amazing, life-giving, hope-filled turnaround message. And um, so good. Hey, look, what we wanna do in this moment, we don't do this every time we have people come and speak, but we do from time to time, is we would love to receive an offering just to be a real blessing to Charles and the ministry and and, uh, and uh, he's, he's worked so hard for us all through college, last night in the city, also today, then tonight. And uh, we, we just wanna be a blessing and just say thank you so much for everything that you've done. And on the screens, there's different ways in which you can be involved um, in the offering and there's the envelopes. I'm gonna give you a moment to prepare, but it's all there. And so if you can begin to do that again, again in our church, there's no have to. But we have such a generous church. A lot of people want to be involved in this. So we want to give you an opportunity to do that. So if you can begin to do that, that would be fantastic. So I'll give you a moment. Serge, why don't you stand? Our pastors, why don't you stand for a moment while people are preparing? Why don't you stand? Stand up for a second. I know in other locations, where, where, where are they? All our pastors, this is what we want to do. At the end of the service, if you need to talk to someone from this message and want some more help, why don't you go to one of our team, they're gonna be in the foyers on the doors and we would love for you, just go to them and say, hey, you know what, that message was for me and we'll actually do the journey with you and we'll actually help you through to that recovery life. Is that cool? And same with all our other locations, that's great, thanks guys. Well, let me pray for you as we receive the giving, all our hosts ready to go, which is great. So Father, thank you. We do wanna be a great blessing to Charles. And I know your Bible, the, the, the Bible tells us to be a blessing to those that bring the Word. And Father, we thank You for his life. We thank You for this message. We thank You for the fruit that it's gonna produce. In Jesus' Name, Amen, Amen. So why don't we receive that? Why don't we have some receiving music as we do that, Ben? That would be fantastic. Some receiving music. I may even sing, no, I'm not gonna sing. Not even think about it. I wonder if that recovery life means you can actually get a singing voice if you don't have one. Who would like one of those? <laughs> hey, don't forget tonight, five o'clock and six, and six o'clock, Pastor Brian and Bobby uh, sharing and Ben and Carolee uh, interviewing them. Last week, if you missed it, it was absolutely brilliant. So we get to see a side of them that we probably don't normally see every day. So we're really, really excited about that. Very excited.
Fantastic. Well, why don't we stand to our feet? I'm gonna ask Bobby to come and pray a benediction over us as we finish this service. Okay. I love this morning. How good was it? And look, you're getting an early mark. I redeem time for Pastor Charles. Like that's a miracle for a woman, all right? <laughs> you're gonna have the best um, afternoon. In Jesus' Name. Father God, we just thank You for Your kindness and Your grace to us as a church. And Lord, always our um, prayer, our prayer is that You will just cover every family, every home and individual, every couple. Father, every family as we go our way this week. So Lord, bless them in Jesus' Name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 We love you, church. We'll see you tonight. And um, you're the best. Okay, see you later. <laughs> Benjamin, Chelsea, sing us out. Sing as you leave the room. <laughs> Praise God. I can't sing. There is a sound yes. I love to hear. It's the sound of the Saviour's robe as you walk into the room where people pray.